Hey, brothers and sisters, second video of the day, but I just, um, you know, I don't know what day he's coming. Nobody knows what day the rapture is. And um, so it's like every day I'm trying to do something to get someone saved. And um, I've shown, I'm showing this book, Speak, Lord, I'm Listening, How to Hear God's Voice Above the Noise. And, you know, when I got born again and started hearing God's voice, he was talking to me every day. And then I was like, oh, my goodness, why did the Baptists never talk about this? Never. And then I got removed from the church, the Baptist church, because the Holy Spirit told me to get baptized again. And when I went down and told the pastor, Dr. Bill Self, here in Atlanta, Bill Self, he said I had to leave the church because God doesn't speak to people anymore. And so I left and my husband and I unfortunately went to go to Andy Stanley's church. So that's my thing is that uh, he definitely, definitely speaks. And I have so many books. I read probably 20 books on hearing God's voice. And if you are not born again, you're not going to be able to hear God's voice um, consistently. You may hear God's voice warn you about about something to protect your life or warn you about you need to get rid of someone in your life or you need to leave a relationship or something like that. But to consistently hear God's voice uh, does require uh, repenting of your sins, confessing and forsaking them, and being born again. Um, but I'm just going to show this because one of the gifts of hearing God's voice, he also gives those who have the gift of prophecy and evangelism messages to give. And um, just for an example... And so many people don't read books anymore, but just for example, I showed it in one of my other videos about how God speaks through dreams and numbers. Um, but here, this book, also in the table of contents, it says Bible journaling. It, it, it talks about people who do automatic writing. That is not the same thing, but journaling, meditation, praise and thanksgiving, surrender, confession, worship, asking in prayer, his peace. His still small voice. I'm not sure why the camera is going out of focus. Um, partial revelations. Visions. Dreams. A message of wisdom. A message of knowledge. Spiritual language. Prophecy. And, um, you know, it's the same thing as the other one. 30 ways that God speaks. And I'm just showing you this because... Um, Wisdom, counsel, and the church. Well, there is my problem, which I'm going to talk. That's what the purpose of this video is. I'm going to show you something about this. But then also, discernment and spiritual warfare. We have to resist the devil. James chapter 4. I had a miracle about James chapter 4. I don't know why it's so out of focus. But anyway, James chapter 4. The first time I opened up to James chapter 4, I was blown away, blown away. And it does say, you must resist the devil and he will flee from you. And then draw close to God and he will draw close to you. And how do we res resist the devil? I mean, it was in this book. I think I was already resisting the devil before I got this book. But we use the name of Jesus. And here's another book. Hearing God's voice today. Practical help for listening to him and recognizing his voice. So the thing is, if you if you are not saved, you're going to hear a lot of different voices. A lot of different voices. Then the other problem is the church. Okay, so here, I'm going to show it again. This is a letter that I wrote hearing God tell me what to write down. So there it is. You can pause it and read it. Here's the second part of the letter. You can pause it and read it. And I've given out about 5,000 of them. And yesterday, my friend, uh, maybe I should go slower. Let me go back up here. 
Uh, yeah. Sorry. I'm trying to get the glare off of it. Okay, maybe that's better. Okay, you see that? It's an urgent letter to help you know the difference, the truth about heaven and hell. Okay? I want people to get saved. And yesterday, my friend went uh, with her grandmother to in Michigan. Um, I think she went to a different state to go to the doctor or the dentist or something. But anyway, she took it. And while she was in the waiting room, she gave the letter to someone in the waiting room with a gospel tract. And the lady actually read it. And so we pray that she will get born again. And here's the second part of... The letter. You see that? I'm so sorry. There's a lot of glare. But, okay, you see, I believe in God the Father, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ. Okay, so why am I doing this video after I already did a video today? Uh, because the church. The church is the problem. The church is the problem. And so today, I am... Once again, trying to show people that you can believe in the rapture, but you're not going in the rapture if you're living in sin, which is what this letter says. And I'm doing the tough thing of sending a letter, a handwritten letter, to a Bible prophecy pastor. And yes, it's completely out of focus. I don't know why. Yeah, it's out of focus. But I'm sending this letter. This is my uh, stamp. I don't know why it's out of focus. Well, this is my stamp. Jesus Christ is Lord. Walking by the Spirit always on YouTube and Rumble. Repent now. Read John and Revelation, the Bible. Are you ready to meet Jesus? Don't be left behind. So my thing is, there are going to be a lot of pastors who are going to be left behind. And I hate, it just bothers me. It truly, truly disturbs me. So I wrote this letter um, to Pastor Tom Hughes of 412 Church. And I am giving him these books. One Flesh, A Biblical Perspective on the Permanence of Marriage by Joe Fogel. And in this book... Joe Fogel believes in the rapture. He believes in the rapture. Yes, he does. I don't know what's going on with my camera today, but there it is. The nature of this one flesh covenant is indissoluble, and a husband and wife may sin against one another, but nothing except death or the rapture can cause them to cease from being husband and wife. I have this also on my Kindle, but I'm trying to, the problem is, there's one book. Here's another one, also written by a pre-tribulation rapture author called The Unbreakable Covenant of Marriage, Escaping the Unholy Trap of Divorce and Remarriage by Pastor Ray McMahon. He has Jesus is Our Shepherd Radio, which he's done for 35 years. He's on Facebook. He continually tells people about this. And in this book, he explains the, um, the preacher rapture. Um, or he explains the, yeah, let's see, where is it? <laughs> he is a preacher of rapture believer. Um... But and these are the these are the I don't know why. Okay, the compromise of divorce or marriage, the espousal period, watch out America, America, a land full of adulterers, King David's adultery, the last days before Christ's return, marriage vows are prophetic. God makes male and female of twain a one flesh covenant. Unto the married I command, yet not I but the Lord. Leaders are to have one wife. Vows are sacred and are to be kept. Um, you return again unto me. The Sermon on the Mount, the Gospel of Matthew, the Gospels of Mark and Luke, John the Baptist, 
Heathen marriages, the strange woman from Proverbs, who was the adulteress, who stands for God. Are you ready? And uh, recommended reading. And Jesus is our shepherd radio broadcast. And then this book here, which um, Divorce and Remarriage. What the church didn't tell you. What the church didn't tell you by J.N. Parks. And then, Divorce and Remarriage, The Trojan Horse Within the Church, Whom Shall We Then Believe? By Dr. Joseph Webb, who is now passed away and in heaven. And I spoke to him on the phone twice. He definitely also believes in the pre-trib rapture. And his, his book um, went through and explains about the teachings of the early church on marriage, divorce, and remarriage, exposing the enemy in the camp. The Reformers, Erasmus, the Trojan Horse, the Devastation of Divorce and Remarriage, Clear Bible Passages on Divorce and Remarriage, Understanding Biblical Covenants, Clarifying Other doctrin Doctrinal Truths, Where Do We Go From Here, and Conclusion. I guess I should have shown in here. Actually, I've gotten permission from the publisher to, um, to use this book, and I'm probably going to do a video and showing... I can't like read the whole book, but I can definitely show what this book is about. Um, the danger of popular opinion, faulty foundations where we've gone wrong, the usual unusual suspects, obstructed vision, context is everything, God's commitment to Israel. That's the thing. The church is not Israel. That's why the church is taken out of here to go in the rapture before God deals with Israel in the tribulation. The origin of marriage. Um, he talks about the implications of the blood. Understanding covenant. The vow of the covenant. Adultery. Christ upholds the covenant. Scandal in the house. The link between adultery and apostasy. Aren't we new creatures in Christ? Cleansed by the blood. God's view on divorce. The finality of the covenant. Um, Romans 7, bound for life. 1 Corinthians 7, the marriage chapter. Believers married to unbelievers. Fornication versus adultery. The exception of fornication explained. Covenant trumps all. Mark 10, no longer twain. Luke 16, cut and dry. Mark 19, rock in a hard place. You know, if, if people would just read Mark 19, uh, excuse me, uh, Matthew 19 in full context, there it says that's when the disciples were like, what? Then it's better not to get married if you're married for life. And so I am trying to snatch a pastor from being left behind because, um, and I'm not, I'm not saying for sure that Tom Hughes is going to be left behind. But I know that there are many pastors who are talking about the rapture. Many pastors who are talking about the rapture. But they ignore this major subject. And is God going to let them go in the rapture when they have not warned the people like a watchman to leave the adultery? So all I can do, you know, I wrote a letter to Tom Hughes. Um, I've talked with, Tom Hughes has had, he's had um, a guy named, uh, oh goodness, what is his name? Kurt Reed, fill in for him. And Kurt Reed, um, I think his channel is something about Maranatha. But Kurt Reed is just like all the other Calvary Chapel pastors that believe that you can be divorced or remarried. And I also mentioned in this letter that, um, you know, I was in Andy Stanley's church. Now, the thing is, Rake, uh, not Rake, um, I was in Andy Stanley's church for six years. And um, the thing is, there are a lot of these reformed people, a lot of big channels. They all want to talk about Andy Stanley, you know, but then they don't talk about that the elephant in the room, the Trojan horse. That divorce and remarriage is just the same. But I will have to say, and I said it in this letter, that I had watched uh, Tom Hughes's, he's hope for our times. 
he brings in all these people to interview and talk about Bible prophecy, which is really good. But if we're going to talk about Bible prophecy, we have to, and he talks about America being in big trouble. But um, he, Tom Hughes, in his church, he preached a sermon called The Marriage Trap. The time I went to go look at it, it only had 726 views. 726 is Harpazo Rapture. But, um, you know, he said no divorce, no remarriage. But then when I contacted his church, two different pastors do perform remarriage ceremonies, which means they have divorced or married people in the church. And then they're serving them communion, which is what I said in this letter. And then um, I also told him, you know, that I had talked with Kurt Reed. I told him that I call out uh, these false teachers on divorce and marriage on occasion, such as John MacArthur, Jimmy Evans. Jimmy Evans is terrible. John MacArthur is terrible. They believe in the preacher rapture. They're doing, Jimmy Evans is doing all these videos about how he changed from being post-trib to pre-trib. But then for 30 something years, he's had a blended marriage ministry. Um, Jack Hibbs. I, I did a video in 2021, I think it was, it might have been 2019, about Jack Kibbs, Greg Laurie, and um, Jimmy Evans. I might should re-upload re that. And unfortunately, so this is just my letter, I'm just showing you. I, I'm just trying to get a pastor saved from being left behind. But... The church isn't talking about Jesus coming. The church is not talking about divorce and remarriage. And I'm doing whatever I can besides praying for these people to wake them up. I've sent, I haven't sent this book, but I have sent um, Divorce and Remarriage, The Trojan Horse, and this one, which is really excellent, by Joe Fogel. I've sent them to so many pastors, so many pastors. But why are they not going to deal with this? Why are they not going to deal with it? Because everybody would leave their church. And unfortunately, it's very hard to find a church. So if you are in a church and you think, well, this is being judgmental, being judgmental. Well, actually, the Bible says that we are to judge the church, the people that are in the church and the church, we're to judge them. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. It says, we don't judge the world. The world is already lost. The world already belongs to the devil. But we are to judge those who are in the church and those who are preaching in the church. And if they are saying that you can remain in sin, that you can claim to be a believer and continue to take communion when you are living in sin, whether that's fornicating or divorce and remarriage or cheating on your spouse, which is adultery. Um, divorce and marriage is adultery. You know, it's like people think, well, we're so far. We're so, the church is so far now from biblical Christianity. Well, that's true because of their embracing of the, um, you know, the gay agenda, but Satan already had the church decades before. And as, um, and as this book here says, you know, the reformers, Erasmus. Yeah. Yeah. It started in the 1500s with Erasmus. So the thing is, um, you know, if you really were living, I'm going back to the speak Lord, I'm listening. If you really want to find the truth, if you really want to find the truth and make sure that you're right with the Lord, he will speak to you. He will show you what your sins are. And then you can ask to be forgiven and go and sin no more by the power of the Holy Spirit. And then this is a list of sins. Sin is failing to do the things we should. This is a list of the sins of omission. And I used this list when I first got saved. I would look at this a lot, a lot. 
It's the sins of omission, not forgiving, failing to honor others, failing to keep your fervor, failing to serve or give, failing to live at peace, failing to love God. You see, failing to give thanks to God, failing to glorify God, failing to fear the Lord. Kind of interesting since today is 15,000, which is like triple grace, 555, and 11, 111 days since I got married. And 111 is fear of the Lord. Proverbs 3, 7, fear of the Lord. Failing to test new teaching by scripture. Failing to discern and guard against false teachers and false prophets. Failing to learn and believe scripture. Failing to guard life and doctrine. You see, so here's a list. Failing to believe Jesus. Failing to share the gospel. Matthew 28, 19. Failing to defend the faith. Failing to care for orphans and widows in their distress. Failing to honor God. Failing to honor the Son. The video that I just did, I've been sort of on a thing talking about the Trinity because we're supposed to honor God, the Father, God, the Son. The Holy Spirit in us causes us to do this. Failing to believe in Jesus. Failing to trust Christ. Failing to trust God. Failing to love God and failing to love your neighbor as yourself. And then this. The advantage of being an older believer is you have all this stuff. <laughs> you know, you have all this stuff. And, um, and young people don't have this stuff. <laughs> and doing those things we should not. So sin of commission and sins of omission. And then sins of commission is wrong teaching for people who are doing videos, teaching the Bible when they're teaching wrong. That is sin. Matthew 23, 15. Witchcraft, insincere love. Romans 12, 9 is one of my favorite verses. Love must be without hypocrisy. Hate evil, cling to what is good. Divination, causing someone else to sin. Yikes. Interpreting omens. I get, I get accused that I'm doing something with omens. It's like, what? Consulting the dead. Or that would also be like praying for the dead, which is what the Catholics do. That, And even Christians do that. Y'all, you can't pray for the dead. Once they're dead, they're dead. It's appointed for a man to die once and then face the judgment. You can't pray someone to be saved after they've already died. Um. Sexual Im impurity, homosexuality, idolatry, greed, blasphemy, misusing the Lord's name, selfish ambition, fits of rage, slave trading, lying, hypocrisy. I would also add in hypocrisy, it has 1 Peter 2, 1, but, um, you know, that's where these preachers are in big trouble. Um, Matthew 23, Jesus said, woe to the hypocrites. Seven times. Stealing. Sorcery. Disobeying parents. Inventing evil. Boasting. Arrogance. Insolence. Hating God. Slander. Gossip. Malice. Strife. Murder. Deceit. Envy. Depravity. Astrology. Consulting the dead. Okay, so I got those. So this is just a list. If you're a new believer, let the Holy Spirit speak to you by pausing this and just looking over the list. Sin is failing to do things we should. The sins of omission. You know, the book of James also talks about, you know, and doing those things we should not. Sins of commission. So, you know, I here I go. I'm going to mail this all out to Hope for Our Times. I don't know what day and hour the Lord is coming, but I know that, you know, I want people to get saved. Speak, Lord, I'm listening. How to hear God's voice above the noise. The devil wants you to die and go to hell. That's what the devil wants. He's after you. He's after you. You have to seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Ask him. Where am I sinning, Lord? What is it that I'm doing? A humble and broken and contrite heart he will not. 
He will not um, turn you away. You say, Lord, I am a sinner. And then call on the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, the demons have to flee. They have to flee the name of Jesus. And just do it. Every time you're being led into temptation, call on the name of Jesus so that you can turn from your temptations. And this is, a, yeah, look at that. I got, I spilled on it, but I'm just going to show it because, uh, you know, if I, if I'm disappearing today, then this is a record that's on the channel or it's for whoever comes into my house that sees all this left behind stuff. But this was an acronym that I heard from the Lord. Now I used to work for IBM. IBM is an, is an acronym, International Business Machines. And so one day... He gave me this acronym for Lord. In the morning, pray, Lord, L for Lord, please take the lead in my life. I give you the control to be the leader I want to follow. That's humility. Omniscient. You know everything there is to know about me. May my thoughts, actions, and work be pleasing to you and obedient to you, your will, for all of my life. Now, where I spilled it, that was R for ruler. Please be the ruler of my day, letting me live by the Holy Spirit, which you have graciously given me. Keep me from sinning. <laughs> you know, why, why would we want to keep on sinning when we belong to the Lord? We don't. Dominion, D for dominion. There is nothing which you don't control. Please keep my focus on you and the good and on the good gifts and talents you provide to me. Help to use what I have been given. Help me to use what I've been given to serve your kingdom. Then in the evening, and the reason why this got wet was I, <laughs> I had uh, made this and then I had put it up on all my kids' uh, mirrors, bathroom mirrors, and then my ba bathroom mirror. So it was like in the morning you pray that, the Lord acronym, and then in the evening, pray Romans 12, 1 through 2, living sacrifices. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer yourselves, offer your bodies. It's hard to read through this. Read through this. Offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And then Colossians 2, 6 through 7, Christ brings real life. As you have put, on your, as you have put your trust in Christ Jesus the Lord to save you from the punishment of sin, now let him lead you in every step. Have your roots planted deep in Christ. Grow in him. Get your strength from him. Let him make you strong in the faith, strong in the faith as you have been taught. Your life should be full of thanks to him. So, um, hope some of that helps. I'm going to continue to pray that some people are repenting of the sin of divorce or marriage. He gives you the strength, y'all. Call on the name of Jesus. I am amazed every once in a while I have somebody who comes to my channel and says, I was just looking into divorce or marriage um, last week and somehow I found your channel. There's a guy named Joseph who just did that. He's like, I just started looking into it last week and then I found your channel. And he says, um, he says I've been divorced and I started dating a little bit last year. And then I was asking God about it and then I found your channel. And he, said, he asked me if I could explain Matthew 19, 9, which I've done in a bunch of different videos. But I explained, it. I believe in the betrothal. And these books all believe in the betrothal. So um, I came upon this with my own study, not, that, um, not having these books. I didn't get these books until on divorce or marriage until after I came to YouTube. And I had come to the understanding about what the Bible had to say that, you know, once you're married, you're married for life. Um, 
Yeah, here's here's what here's what Pastor Ray says. God instituted marriage. God hates divorce. God never sanctions remarriage after a divorce while the first spouse is still alive. He sums it up. He sums it up. And then he is also someone who um, says this is the reason why America is in big trouble. But he does have, page 32, the espousal period. See, he's got the espousal period. And Matthew, Joseph and Mary were espoused husband and wife. You know, if anybody's familiar with um, Lot and his two daughters that escaped Sodom and Gomorrah, well, his daughters were virgins, but his he had two sons-in-law. Now, how could that be? How could he have two sons-in-law, but his daughters were still virgins? Ah, because they were espoused. They were betrothed. And the two sons-in-law were not having sex with their with his daughters. They were espoused. They were husband and wife, sons-in-law. That's what the espousal period is about. And that's why Joseph, a just man, was going to divorce Mary for fornication because he thought that she had had sex with a man during her betrothal and that she was had lost her virginity. But it's the it's the way of the Jews and it's the way of it's the way of God, actually, if you think about it. See Joseph and Mary espoused yet husband and wife. Now of course um Sodom and Gomorrah is mentioned in the New Testament. It is. So, anyway. Um, I'll just show that real quick there. And this book is really good, but this book you have to get um, from Pastor Ray McMahon. You have to ask him to mail it to you. Um, but anyway, it's a good book. It's Actually, it's probably the most thorough of the books. Most thorough of the books. And, um, yeah, many Christians today accept divorce or marriage, stating that God's grace abounds and is upon them, believing that God just wants them to be happy or that God has made exceptions in the Bible. But God never said divorce and remarriage are acceptable. In fact, he said quite the opposite. So, thanks for listening. Um, Y'all, please pray for these pastors. There are just so many of them. There are just so many of them that are being bold and talking about end times, but they're not talking about this. And I hate to think of how horrible it's going to be on the day when the rapture does happen and they find themselves left behind. They've written books about the rapture. Jimmy Evans has written books about the rapture. Dr. David Jeremiah has written books about the rapture. But Dr. David Jeremiah is another one who is pre-trib, but he says you can be divorced and remarried for the same causes. Oh, because they committed adultery. Oh, because they left you. No, the Bible made it clear. Jesus made it clear. There's no exception in Mark or Luke, Romans 7, 1 Corinthians 7, only until death depart. And don't be hypocrites pointing at the fornicators and the homosexuals and all that when you are accepting divorce and remarriage, which is no different to God. So, um, you know, let's just pray that some people wake up before it's too late. Really. Thanks for listening. I hope something helped bless you. I hope that... You know, looking at these things would cause you to seek the Lord and that he will speak to you and tell you what is the truth. Okay, God bless you. Maranatha.